Fallout 3 has a special place in my heart and in the hearts of many fans. I'm also a fan of Fallout New Vegas, and I accept that it does a lot of things better. But for some reason, when I think back to my experiences in the Capital Wasteland, I get nostalgia goosebumps. I don't know if it's the world space, the atmosphere, or the music, but whatever it is, I just, I get that deep emotional longing to go back and play Fallout 3 again. But let's face it, the game did not age as well as Fallout New Vegas. It's a lot less stable, there are more performance issues, and the New Vegas modding community is far more active. So that's why it's great that you can experience the Capital Wasteland story from Fallout 3 on the Fallout New Vegas engine via a mod called the Tale of Two Wastelands. Now, of course, this is a very, very ambitious mod that is bringing the entirety of Fallout 3 over to New Vegas, and so the installation process is a little more involved, to say the least, than, you know, your, your normal mods and it can be somewhat intimidating when you first look at it. But whilst it does take a little more time than most mods, it's actually not that difficult. And in this video, I want to take you through the process and show you that it really isn't, it isn't a big problem. And if you are really, really jonesing for that Fallout 3 experience, but you want to play, on a more stable engine with access to the latest mods that the modern community are creating, you can do it. And it really isn't going to be that difficult. Before we install the Tale of Two Wastelands mod, there are a number of things we're going to have to make sure we've got. And if you go along to the official installation guide for this mod, and I'll leave a link to that down below, they do list those things for you. The most important thing you're going to need are English copies of both Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas, along with all the DLCs from Steam or GOG. I'm afraid the Bethesda Net version is not supported. Both of those games need to be installed on your system before you can install Tale of Two Wastelands. You'll need a Nexus Mods account because a lot of the mods that are essential for Tale of Two Wastelands are hosted there. You will also need a mod manager of some sort. I'm going to be using Vortex, but you can use whichever tool you are comfortable with, although I would recommend you use one that has profiles. On the subject of Vortex, if you're new to that tool, I do have an entire series of videos that will take you through all the basics from installing mods, setting up profiles, and even installing collections of mods. And I'll leave a link to the playlist down below in the description. I will also leave a link to my beginner's guide to modding Fallout New Vegas. If you've never modded New Vegas before, you might want to go through that beforehand because Tale of Two Wastelands is a fairly major overhaul. And in this video, I'm going to assume you've got at least the basic understanding of installing mods for Fallout New Vegas. There are also some technical requirements such as DirectX runtime libraries and Microsoft Virtual C++, and you can find links to those on the installation guide itself. You may well already have those. You are going to need a text editor, Notepad++ is the recommended one, and I agree with that. It's a great little program, but Windows Notepad will work. And you're probably going to need an archiving tool, something such as 7-Zip. Again, links can be found on the installation page or in the description below this video. From this point onwards, I'm going to assume that you've got Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas installed. You've got Vortex installed and you've used it to install some mods in Fallout New Vegas, either because you're testing and getting used to it, or because you've actually done a full modded playthrough beforehand. But now we need a completely blank slate. 
you want to be installing Tale of Two Wastelands on a totally vanilla installation of Fallout New Vegas that is completely unmodded. And so we're going to start by creating a profile in Vortex just for Tale of Two Wastelands. And I'm going to do this by going over to Profiles and clicking on it. And then I'm going to add Fallout New Vegas profile by clicking this button. I'm going to name it Tale of Two Wastelands. And I'm going to specify that this profile has its own save games because they will not be compatible with any other mod setup. And I'm going to give this profile its own game settings. Doesn't really need to be described, seeing as I think Tale of Two Wastelands is enough. I'm going to hit save. And then there it is. I'm going to enable it. Once it's switched, I'm just going to click on mods. And you can see, although I've still got a lot of mods downloaded and installed in Vortex, none of them are currently deployed to the game itself. So the game is in what should be a vanilla state. I'm going to close Vortex down and I'm going to open up the games folder. And for me, because I've got it on Steam, it's Steam, Steam Apps, Common. Fallout New Vegas. And I'm just going to look inside the data folder and see if I can see any signs of mods that have been left behind. If you can see files that are obviously mods, it possibly means something went wrong with your mod manager or you've used different mod management tools or you've installed some mods by hand. It might be a good idea if you're not 100% sure that your game is in a vanilla state, it might be an idea for you to just delete the game and reinstall it. And I need to stress this. If you have modded the executable in any way, the chances are changing profiles or uninstalling mods will not undo that. So for example, if you've used the four gigabyte patcher and you almost certainly have, if you've been modding Fallout New Vegas, this change is not undone. And at the time of making this video, you do need that executable to be completely vanilla. That may change in a future update, but for now, you want to make sure this is vanilla. Now, I think mine is actually. However, I could either uninstall the game and reinstall it because that is probably the safest thing to do. I can tell you I've done that quite recently. Or I could just delete the file and because I'm on Steam, I just go along to my library and find Fallout New Vegas, properties, local files, verify integrity of game files. It will find I'm missing one file and it will give me a new copy of the executable. I believe actually it would have detected if it wasn't the original version and replaced it anyway. GOG probably has something similar. My point is, you need to make sure that your Fallout New Vegas installation is pretty much stock vanilla. But whatever you do at this point, you should run the game through the launcher, actually, just to make sure everything is working and that it generates any files it needs to generate if they've been removed. So I'm just going to hit play and just make sure I can get in game without it crashing. Assuming all is well, we now have a functioning copy of Fallout New Vegas in its vanilla state, and it's time to install the mod itself. Of course, the first thing you need to do when installing a mod is download it. The download link can be found on the installation guide. If you click there, go along to the TTW download, and you are looking for the latest version of the installer. Select the link that is most appropriate for you. For me, it's the European Direct link. And the file will begin to download. I download directly to my desktop, but you may have downloaded it somewhere else. So you need to go to your downloads location, find the installer, right click on it, and then use whichever archive program you've chosen to extract the contents of the archive. I'm going to leave it under a folder called TTW Installer, and it will take 
a little time depending on the speed of your system. Once it's done, you can actually delete the archive file if you want to, and then open up the extracted folder, and you're looking for a file called ttwinstall.exe. Don't worry if the .exe is missing for you, it just means you've got Windows set up to hide known extensions. Now, you can right click and select Run as Administrator, or you can probably just double click and then you'll get user account control and just say yes, and it will start the installation process. I'm gonna minimize this to, uh, to keep it a little neater. The path to your Fallout 3 installation and to your Fallout New Vegas installation should come pre-filled. Double check that they're correct, and of course, if they're not filled in, you'll have to uh, find out where those games are installed and copy the location manually into these two boxes. The third input box is where you tell the installer where it should install the files for this mod. And this is where it gets a little more complicated because there is a quick way of doing this and a super safe way of doing this. And um, somewhat out of character, I'm going to show you the quick way first. And the reason for that is I know that's the one you're all going to choose and I'm not gonna fight a battle I know that I've lost already. Now the quick way is to let the installer install the mod instead of Vortex. But to do that, we need to know where Vortex normally installs its mods. So I need to run Vortex once more and incidentally, when I do this, it will detect that I've got a completely unmodded game and it will recommend or at least suggest I might want NVSE. And in actual fact, yes, I do. So I'm going to let Vortex download and install NVSE right now. It is one of the mods that's essential for the Tale of Two Wastelands. Once it's done, I'm gonna select the Mods tab and I'm gonna go up to Open click there, and then select Open Mod Staging Folder. This is the folder where Vortex actually installs all your mods. And once I've selected that, I can close Vortex. This is the folder I'm interested in. I'm going to create a new folder here, and I'm gonna call that folder Tale of Two Wastelands. Try to, try to spell it correctly. Um, I've made that mistake a few times. And then I'm gonna head into there. So this is now the folder where the mod is going to be installed. I can now right click and copy address as text and then just paste this into there. I then hit install and well, your job's done for a while because it is now building the mod and it is going to take quite some time. You can probably go off, get a coffee, maybe even watch some YouTube videos. It, it starts off quite quickly. It does start to slow down though. When you come back a little later, you should see this message telling you that you need to ensure you have the following files in your load order and also that you need these three mods. I'm gonna click exit. Now what we have to do is once again start Vortex. This time when we start Vortex up, it will know that we've been doing something. There you go. Mods have changed on disk. This means that mods were managed by Vortex disappeared and or mods that Vortex previously didn't know about appeared in the staging folder since the last time it checked. It's highly discouraged to modify the staging folder outside Vortex in any way. Now you can see why this is not the super safe method. This message is actually one I agree with. It's not a good idea to, to edit that folder. It's best to leave it to Vortex, but in this case, I understand why people are gonna to want to do it this way because it is the shortest way, trust me. It may not feel it yet, but it is. So I'm going to apply changes. What this will do is it will tell Vortex, no, I'm fine, I meant to do that. And when I click on the mods and go down to tail of two wastelands, there will be a mod. If I go and look 
open in file manager I can see all of the files that are now part of this mod as you can see it is rather a large folder it is 15.6 gigabytes I'm going to enable and then enable all because it has multiple plugins and essentially that's the main mod installed it won't work yet because you're missing a lot of essential mods and there are some other things like any tweaks that you need to do but the core mod has been built and installed and is now enabled in fact you can actually start the game again I will stress it won't work properly but you can start the game you can go in and once you get to the menu you could start a new game click yes and then you will get the intro movie for New Vegas. I'm going to skip that. It will then be followed by the intro movie to Fallout 3. As you can see, things are not quite working yet. I'm going to skip this. And then I'm going to get some messages telling me I'm missing a bunch of mods. However, this is actually as I expected. But that means the mod has been installed, at least the core mod itself. Now I'm sure you've already guessed that the super safe way to install this is to actually let Vortex do the installation. And the way you would do this is instead of installing it straight into the Vortex staging area, you would set up a folder somewhere else. For example, I will set up a folder here on my desktop of to wastelands and then I will just browse and go along to the desktop to that folder and then I will install it there. Once again, this will take a long time. Again, once it's done, you'll get the, uh, the message telling you you still require these three mods. Hit exit and now start Vortex. Of course, the mod has not been built in Vortex yet. We have a folder here, but it's a simple matter of going to the mods tab and then left clicking and dragging the entire folder to where it says drop files. What this will do is it will start importing all of these files and create an archive that you would typically download from the Nexus, for example. And once it's done, actually that took less time than I thought it was going to take. I thought that was going to take, oh, it's still, no, it's still going. <laughs> thought it would be. It will be taking a while. I got my hopes up there. This is creating a very large archive. It's about nine gigabytes. So that's another downside of doing it the super safe way. It takes longer because of this extra step and it will require at least nine gigabytes more hard disk space. Then once the archive has been created, it's as though you've just downloaded the mod from somewhere like Nexus. You click install, it will start the installation process. And again, after a while, the mod will be installed and you will want to enable all. And then basically, you're done. You've got it installed once again, this time completely through Vortex. And you can now delete the files the installer created, and you probably should because you've already used quite a lot of hard disk space. Now, as I've already mentioned, even though you've installed the core mod, it's not working yet. It doesn't matter which way you chose to install it, there are some more requirements, some essential mods that you're going to need to install before Tale of Two Wastelands will work. You can find the list of essential mods on the Tale of Two Wastelands installation guide, which again, I will leave the link down below, under essential mods. And if you just read down this list, it's probably a lot of familiar mods, mods that you are used to installing if you've modded Fallout New Vegas before and they're fairly easy to install. There are installation instructions for each and every one of the mods. You will notice for most mods, the installation instructions are a link to the download site, usually Nexus, and then the file that you should download and install pretty much the standard way. 
There are three exceptions to that, three mods that do require a little more work than just download with your mod manager and install, and those mods are the 4GB patch, NVSE, and the New Vegas heat replacer. Now, if you're using Vortex, you don't have to worry about one of those mods, because Vortex installs New Vegas Script Extender for you, if you allow it, and I recommend that you do. But I've also created a collection that will download and install all of the essential mods for Tale of Two Wastelands, and you can just click the Add to Vortex button, and Vortex will download, and then you can click Install Now, and it will very quickly install all the required mods. You will probably get a warning telling you you're downloading a mod from some other place other than Nexus. Uh, don't worry, it's perfectly safe. It's the ini file for Stewie's tweaks. Just hit continue, and when it's done, just click done, and all of the mods have now been installed. But there are still two mods that require a little more attention from you, and the first of those is the New Vegas Heat Replacer. The first thing I want you to do is double click here so that it opens up the information panel and check the mod type, which you'll find close to the bottom, and make sure Engine Injector has been selected. It should come installed that way if you've used the collection. If you've installed it manually, if you downloaded it yourself and installed it manually, you will need to change this to Engine Injector. This basically tells Vortex that these files go in the main game folder rather than in the data folder. Once you've made sure that is the case, you can once again double click here to remove that information and now right click and select open in file manager. This opens up the folder where the mod is installed. Not the data folder, not the game folder, but the folder that Vortex installed the mod into before it deploys it. And what I want you to do is double click the CPU underscore info dot exe. Don't worry if the exe is missing. As I said, that's just your Windows hiding known extensions. Double click it. It will open up a little console window and it will list a bunch of things and then end with use and then one of these labels and then press any key to continue. For me, it's saying use AVX2. It may be different for you. This is very important. Read it carefully. Use AVX2 for me. Press any key to continue. So I go to AVX2. I go into that folder. I left click and I select copy. I go back up one folder and I paste right here. I can then close this folder. I need to then redeploy just to make sure. And the last mod we need to look at is the four gigabyte patcher, which will be installed. Again, I'm gonna double click and check the information and make sure the mod type is engine injector. If you're installing this manually, you're going to have to set this yourself, but the collection will set it to engine injector. Once I've made sure of that, I'm going to minimize this because I'll need to go to my game folder. Now my game folder is on my F drive under Steam, Steam apps, common Fallout New Vegas. You will have to find out where yours is. And then I'm gonna look down for the fnvpatch.exe file and double click it to run it. It will open a very quick program that will patch it, tell you it's finished, and then tell you to press a key to continue. And then you're pretty much done for the installation process. I say pretty much because there are a few settings you still need to tweak. And I'll show you why by running the game through the NVSE loader right now. You'll see this new window appear. That is the heat replacer. That is telling me that it is running. But when I boot the game up now and start a new game, I'll still get the new Vegas intro. I'm gonna skip it and then skip the Fallout 3 intro. And now it's telling me that I have some misconfigured innie settings. Tale of Two Wastelands does require some innie tweaks. 
And there are a number of ways you can do that. In fact, if you've installed all of the essential mods using the collection that I created, it should apply the any tweaks for you. But at the time of making this video, there does seem to be a bug with Vortex in that it is not applying those any tweaks every time you download the collection. However, there is a very easy fix for it. Just go along to the collection, disable it, and just go through the process, hit disable. And then once it's done, click it again, enable. That will actually apply the any tweaks. And now if I start a new game, it will go straight to this menu asking me which wasteland I want to start in. And I can select the capital wasteland. I will get the Fallout 3 intro, which I shall skip because, well, because I'm a heathen. And <laughs> then it will uh, start the game correctly this time. If you are not using the collection to install the essential mods, you will need to create a Fallout custom ini um, and paste in the required ini tweaks. In fact, even if you're using the collection that I created, you can create your own Fallout custom ini anyway and use that just to be sure. And in fact, that is what I'm going to do. To do this, you need to go along to Vortex and go to the Open tab and open game settings folder. Once you're here, you want to right click, go to new and create say a text document and then rename it fallout custom dot ini. You wanna remove the text. So you've now got a new ini file. Click yes when it asks if you want to change the extension and then Edit this. Now I'm going to edit it with Notepad++. You can edit it with the default text editor if that's all you've got. I just rather like Notepad++. And then you're going to need the any tweaks and you can find those on the Taylor 2 Wastelands installation guide uh, under a section entitled any tweaks, tweaking Fallout custom any. Simply select the entire section here copy it and then paste it into that file, save it. And that's the any file sorted. The last thing you need to do is go along to your dashboard and check the archive invalidation. If it's set to no, and it may well be because it's a new profile, click it so that it sets to yes. And that's it. You can now experience Fallout 3 on the Fallout New Vegas engine with all the latest mods. Or you could check that it's working, close the game, and then go off and find a bunch more mods. Because whilst I've given you the essential mod list, that is definitely not the limit of what you will probably want to be installing. There are quite a few mods that I would recommend in fact, that's what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to go off and make another video with other mods I think you probably should use. You're more than welcome to join me on that video or indeed just play the game for a little while. You've put a lot of work in, yeah? Maybe you want to just get started before you install a few new mods. But whatever you decide to do, I look forward to seeing you again. And until then, remember as always, have fun. I've lost all ambition for worldly acclaim.